Well, glory to God. Hey, I want to declare to you today, we have started a new series, and it is a study in Galatians. We just come out of 2 Corinthians, and, and if the Lord don't change my mind, they're going to, I'm going to continue on through Paul's epistles, teaching what what. God wants us to hear and understand in these epistles that where we stand with God matters. And this study in Galatians, I'm going to tell you something. It, it, I, I can already, I already know it in my heart what, what God's Word will do because it, it will completely change the way you look at things when you start hearing what God's Word says. I want to encourage you. This is something that we have uh, not said a whole lot about up until this point, but this is something that I heard years ago and, and, and it, and it went off in me and I've tried to do that a lot, a lot of my Christian life is, is dwell in Paul's epistles. Paul, Paul was called, uh, the apostle to the Gentiles and he was an apostle that taught people where they stood in Christ Jesus. And, like I say, I'm not I'm not lifting Paul up. I'm lifting our Heavenly Father up. I'm lifting our Lord and Savior up. I'm lifting the Spirit of God up that that led Paul to do what he done. If you want to live strong in this world as a Christian, if you want to live in your Lord and Savior, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, spend the majority of your time in your in your study in Paul's epistles. Because you're going to become strong in it. I, I, I told a guy last week at the, I don't know, last week, just a few days ago at a local jail here that we, about an hour from here where we, we minister on a weekly basis. I told him, I said, if you, if you want to be, become a strong Christian, I said, spend the majority of your time in the, in the New Testament and find out what God wants you to know about who you are in Christ Jesus. I said, I'm not talking about not ever going into the Old Testament because Jesus is from Genesis to Revelation. But I, want to, I said, I want you to understand something. Paul went out of his way to help us and feed, feed us and strengthen us to the point that we can be a help to somebody else. See, that's that's where I think that that the 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 world that we live in and and the church as as it is today has really dropped the ball because people are uh, a lot of the the churches that I see today are dealing with people's emotions. They're not trying to help them overcome the, that weakness. They're trying to live in that weakness with them and minister to them in their weakness instead of pulling them out of their weakness. Now, this this is me. I mean, this is what's in my heart. But I've said this over and over. I've said it very a whole lot in 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 jails and prisons that I've been in, but I've said it a whole lot on the videos that that I have have been doing that goes into the prisons and the jails. I said, look, I don't care, I don't care how dirty I got to get to get to you. Now I'm not talking about per, uh, partaking into the things that they, that people are doing, but I'm talking about walking through that mess to get to to you. I don't care how deep out here in the mud that you are. I'll walk out there and help you understand. I'll get you by the wrist, and I'll do my best to pull you out of that mess and show you what God says about you because that's what matters. That's what matters. And this study in Galatians is is just going to reiterate what we've been talking about for the last two years, that God loves you, He cares for you, and He wants you to know where you stand in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Glory to God. Once again, I want to bring you my prayer for the world. My prayer for the world comes out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. Paul wanted the Ephesians to realize and understand the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God had for them. And I want the world to see this. I want the world to come to the conclusion that God's for them. 
that he cares for them, and he wants them to know it, and he wants to have their eyes open to his love and his mercy, his grace and his goodness. And when they open their eyes to that, they're opening their eyes to his word. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he calls. His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he opens his his love and his mercy and his grace up to me every day of my life. He shows it to me and he shows it to me through his word. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. God, me. Lord, touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're going to be in Galatians 1 and 4 today. And like we was talking about yesterday, you know, Paul started out and he was he he wished them. He told them, said, "May God bring you grace and peace." And 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 I want you to understand something. This was a group of people that had been born again, had had by faith given Jesus Christ, accepted Him as their, their Lord and Savior, and then turned right around and and seemed content. With with walking a a life of the law, after they had they had received Jesus, and that that's rampant today. That's rampant today. You know, people want you to want they they. We've done a good job at getting people born again, but we've been, done done a very subpar job in teaching people what that salvation brings them. A lot of people, all they want to do is just throw on a bunch of rules and regulations and and hammer people when they when they get out of line out of, out, of, out of line with them. That just pushes people away. I want you to live in the grace and the love and the mercy of, of of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and be strong in it. We're going to talk about it today. It says Galatians one and four says, "Who gave?" Himself. This is the King James Version. It says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. The New Living Translation says, Jesus gave his life for our sins, just as God our Father planned in order to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. The Amplified Classic says, Who gave, yielded himself up to atone and 
and for our sins and to save and sanctify us in order to rescue and deliver us from his, from this present wicked age and the word and the world order in in accordance with the will and purpose and plan of our God and Father. See, Jesus Christ, we we talked about this in in our uh weekly meeting that goes into the jail. We're still teaching the the in, in him scripture card on that meeting and that, that's the sunday podcast if you want to uh start listening to it you can you can easily go back uh to the beginning of the in him scripture study and listen to those video because i i, I do this on thursdays and i take the audio for thursday and 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 put it on sunday's weekly message you know, we, we we want to feed you as much as we can and to, because God's Word is where our strength comes from. But we've been talking about it. And it's, it's, it's amazing how people look at Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus came down here as a man. He was born into this world as a human being and lived 33 and a half years on this, on this planet and 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 lived perfect before God. He fulfilled the law that man couldn't fulfill and gave himself for our sins. He turned right around after he had lived perfectly and died on the cross for our sins, took the punishment for our sins, and paid the price so that we didn't have to. And and we was talking about it last night and became the surety, the the uh the the thing that had been put out in front of us. Let's just let me read the 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 definition for surety, because this is something that is uh, a a big eye opener for what Jesus Christ became. He it comes out of Hebrews seven twenty two. It I'll just let me read it. He says, "By so much Jesus made a surety of a better testament." In other words, he was a person. That, listen, let, listen to this. He was the person that gave us a better covenant. A surety is a person or party that takes responsibility for a debt, default, or other financial responsibilities of another party. So what did Jesus do? He took upon responsibility for every sin that mankind had ever committed or ever would commit, past, present, and future. And he gave himself for us to deliver us away from out of this evil world. And this was according to the will of God. You see, God's, God's will is not that we, that we struggle through life. Yeah, I promise you it's not. It's the, it's, it's the will of religion. Now, I'll just be straight up and honest with you. Religion wants you to struggle every day of your life. And if you get hung up in it, if you get hung up in living in the law, you will live a defeated life for the rest of your days. Now, this is, this is just it in a nutshell. You will live a defeated life for the rest of your days because you'll never measure up to the law. It, it it was given to show man mankind their need of a savior. It was put out so that you so that we as as human beings could see how how short we had fallen from God. It was it was it was put out so that we could see our need of that perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And when we when we come to realize that. And get hold of that, and start walking in those truths, walking in the in the the constant uh, confidence, the hope in Him, that confident expectation, not a not a uh, wish like a, a carnal hope. Carnal hope is nothing but a wish. You know, it, people say I'm hoping and praying. No, they're wishing everything would work out just right, hoping it does. To have no, there's no faith in that kind of hope. There's no faith in that kind of hope. Biblical hope is confident expectation that you can be, that you, that you have been delivered from this evil world. How, did, how, did, how were you delivered? By accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and walking in, abiding in, just I'm talking about uh, living in Him, 
in who you are in him. And when you come to that conclusion, honey, you've got a you've got a you got it you got the world whipped. But you got it, got it whipped. Because what did the King James Version say of Galatians 1 and 4? Who gave himself for us. Him, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. That was God's will. That was God's will from the beginning. It, the Bible talks about it. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? Should come to repentance. He wants everybody to turn from their, from their sin and and run to him. And you say, well, how do you how do you get in good in God's graces? You give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. You make him Lord of your life. And then you you find out what he he says about you. What he done when he saved you. He made you a new creature. He made you the righteousness of God in him. He 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 became sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He was made to be sin. It, it, it didn't, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't out here committing sin. He lived perfect. No, he was made to be sin so that we could walk free of that sin. That thrills me to be able to proclaim to you that in him you are God's righteousness. You are God's righteousness in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it said it was God in Christ. Uh, so let me go back and read it. I hadn't read it in a while. I feel like I need to. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, it says, uh, let me get over here to it. It says, for he hath made him. Who's he? God has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? Jesus didn't know any sin. He'd never sinned. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That, 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 that scripture, that lone scripture right there set me free. Because when I realized that Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior, had made me the righteousness of God. I didn't do it. Couldn't do it. You're going to see throughout this book that the Galatians are, are, are dead set on turning around and, and walking in their uh, law and walking in their religion after they've just given, their, given everything to him. That's not what this is all about. This is what our, our, uh, this, this uh, podcast is about is teaching you who you are in Christ and getting you away from living in the shame and the condemnation of trying to uh, live up to the law. I'm going to tell you something. When you find out who you are in Christ Jesus, you can, you, can live, you can live a strong Christian life because you're looking at him and you're not looking at your performance. Because when you start looking at the law and trying to live in the law, you will start trying to live in your performance and have a performance-based Christian life. And when and what that become, what that brings to you is failure. It will it will bring failure to your life. And Jesus didn't want, don't want that for you. He wants you strong in Him. He wants you to know where you stand in Him. So this is this is where I always ask people: Are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I'm not asking you if you've asked him to forgive you 10,000 times because we all have. I'm not asking you if you believe in God. I'm asking you, have you ever made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Most people do believe in God. and uh, But they've never really understood what salvation really is. Salvation is a decision. Sal salvation is a outward expression of who you are believing in and standing upon them getting you through. And that's salva salvation is easy. Jesus Christ died to give you salvation. Jesus Christ gave his heart and life for you. 
so that you could walk free in this world and live strong in him. So if you want to be born again today, it's easy. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart, into your life, and save you? He will. I promise you he will. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, listen, go to our website. Get in touch with us. If you've got a a smartphone, download this smartphone app. And get this podcast coming to your telephone every day, every day of the week, six days a week. We take Saturday off, but uh, six days a week, this message comes out, a message comes out to strengthen you, to give you his word. That's all we want to do on this podcast is strengthen you through the truth in God's word. So go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you so much for sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do because it takes money to do what we're doing. We're traveling. We're, we're giving, giving he, these cards away and, and paying for the airtime to go on, go through, throughout this podcast and keeping these things going out. And it takes money. And I thank God that, that God is supplying all of our needs through partners like you. Help us do more. Help us to reach out to this world. We're, we like about 5,400 different uh, jails and prisons in this nation having this podcast in all of them. And we're not going to quit till it's done. I'm not going to quit then. I'm going I'm to tell you something. There, this word needs to go out be, and, and so that people can find out who Christ has made them to be in their salvation. So, partners, I want to thank you. Thank you so much. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.